Chapter 6, The Shadow Speaks. By the time I got to school, I could hardly keep my eyes open. All of the tossing and turning was catching up with me. I was yawning so much that one yawn started before the first one was finished. On top of that, all of my friends were still talking about Mikey Jones. I wondered if they would miss me as much as they were going to miss this made-up friend. Gino even talked about throwing Mikey a going-away party. Of course, Gino looked for any excuse to have his mom bake more pies. As the day wore on, I felt like I could fall asleep right at my desk, and that's just what I did. The last thing I remembered about math class was Mrs. Bailey telling us to take out our homework. Apparently, I slept through the whole class and two bells. Two hours had gone by before I woke up. When I did wake up, I didn't recognize anyone sitting next to me. As I rubbed my eyes, I saw Mrs. Bailey heading toward my desk. Good morning, she said. Huh? I asked, very confused. I hope we didn't disturb you, Nicholas. I tried to sit up straight and act natural, but it clearly wasn't working. I glanced at the girl next to me and noticed she had an English book on her desk. Then I saw Joey Grapes and I knew that something was wrong. Joey wasn't in my math class. What time was it? Before my humiliation could continue, the final bell of the day rang. Mrs. Bailey excused everyone except me. Nicholas, can I see you at my desk? Everyone else, have a good day and don't forget your book reports are due tomorrow. I slowly walked up to her desk. What happened? I asked. Funny, that's what I was going to ask you. Mrs. Bailey said, just like my mom, she raised one eyebrow when she spoke. I figured it was a teacher thing. I guess I was tired, I mumbled. Pretty safe guess, she said without looking up. Have a seat, Nick. Yes, Mrs. Bailey. Now, this type of behavior isn't like you, so... We can play 20 questions, or you can just tell me what's going on. If I was going to fall asleep in anyone's class, I was kind of glad it was with Mrs. Bailey. She was one of the younger teachers, but she was no pushover. She was very strict, but also funny. I was hoping she still had her sense of humor. I didn't get too much sleep last night. Are you sick? She asked. No. Okay, she said, looking me right in the eye. Why didn't you sleep? Are you worried about the mortgage? Is your car in the shop? Are your kids giving you a hard time? No, I said, trying not to smile. I just found out that we're moving. Oh, she said. Where are you moving? I couldn't say the words. If I said it out loud, it would have made it true. So I stared at my shoe, pretending I didn't hear the question. Mrs. Bailey didn't buy it. Let's see, she said as she spun the globe on her desk. Paris? No. Greece? No. Kansas? No, I said with a smirk. New Jersey. My parents are dragging us over the Ben Franklin Bridge to New Jersey. And I guess you're not happy about this. Happy? I asked. Who in their right mind would be happy about moving to New Jersey? I don't even think the people that live in New Jersey are too happy about it. They just don't know any better. Are you more mad that you're leaving Philadelphia or that you're going to New Jersey? Both, I said. You know, New Jersey isn't that different from Pennsylvania, she said matter-of-factly. But it's not Philadelphia, I insisted. But you might like it. I doubt that anyone really likes living in New Jersey. Really, Mrs. Bailey said, looking over her glasses. Then she opened her purse and pulled out her wallet. Maybe she's giving me money to run away, I thought. She pulled out her license, keeping her thumb over the picture, and placed it in front of me. I looked twice, and I still couldn't believe it. Mrs. Bailey lived in New Jersey. She never mentioned that to us. I would have remembered. You live in New Jersey, I asked, ever since I married Mr. Bailey. But you love the Phillies, the Flyers, the Sixers, and the Eagles. You can do that in New Jersey? Of course you can, she laughed. 
I was shocked. I never would have thought that Mrs. Bailey lived in New Jersey. On our class trips, she always wore a Phillies cap. She didn't even have an accent. Did you have to move from New Jersey to Philadelphia? Sure did, she said. Were you mad? Not at all. New Jersey has a lot of great places and things to do. In fact, it's closer to Philadelphia than most places in Pennsylvania. I had never thought about it that way, but it was true. New Jersey was closer to Philadelphia than cities like Gettysburg, Harrisburg, and Pittsburgh. But I was used to Philly, and I hated change. Okay, Nick, this is what we're going to do. When you go home, make a list of everything you're going to miss about Philadelphia, and I'll make a list of all the good things in New Jersey. And when you finish your list, don't forget to do pages 145 to 147 in your math book, sleepyhead. I felt myself starting to smile, maybe because I felt better knowing Mrs. Bailey lived in New Jersey, or maybe because I loved a challenge. All right, let's get out of here, she said. You have a lot of work to do. Bye, I said, gathering my books. When I walked out the door, everyone was waiting for me, including Timmy. Nick, Nick, are you in trouble? Did you get detention? Timmy asked, as usual, two inches from my face. No, I said. I pushed him out of my way. So, Rip Van Winkled, what happened to you? Asked Joey Graves, noticing the sleeve marks on my face. I still wasn't ready to tell my friends about moving and decided to keep quiet. Nothing's wrong. I fell asleep. It happens. Could it have anything to do with your family moving up to New Hampshire? Gino Pie asked with a huge grin. The only thing Gino loved more than a juicy pie was juicy gossip. My mouth dropped. I turned my head and glared at Timmy. What? Timmy asked, looking at the ground. They dragged it out of me. And it was real hard, said Boots. We asked him, what was up? Good job, I told my shadow. So what's the deal, asked Benny Bones. Are you really moving to New Hampshire? No. I told you Timmy had it wrong, Joey Grape said. There's no way Nicky Fifth would leave Philadelphia, huh, Nick? Actually, we might be moving, but we're not moving to New Hampshire. We might move to New Jersey. Hey, first Mikey Jones, now you, said Freddy Dragon. Freddy was so convinced that Mikey Jones was real, I almost forgot that I made him up. What are they giving away in New Jersey, Gino Pie asked. Pie, I said sarcastically. Wanna come? Really, Joey Grace, Grapes calmly interrupted. You're really moving to Jersey? Why? It looks like it, I said. My dad wants to live in the country and he found a house he likes. That stinks said Boots. It won't be the same without you. The whole mood of the group changed. As we walked home, no one said much except Timmy. He told everyone about the house. He actually seemed excited. But then again, why wouldn't he be? I was his best friend and I'd be right there in New Jersey with him. When we got to my house, we just stood there in silence. This was exactly what I had been dreading. None of us knew what to say. Everyone was staring at me, even my shadow. After a few minutes of staring back, I decided to make a move. See you tomorrow, Boots says as I walked up the steps. Later, I mumbled.